<laughs> I originally wanted to film the intro to this video in a bank. And then I realized I actually can't remember the last time I've physically been in a bank because you can do your banking from pretty much anywhere nowadays, including a barn. And I'm gonna speak with three founders who are gonna tell me why they're so excited about open banking and how it's gonna revolutionize the future of fintech. Personally, I think that this is kind of a very, very exciting future to be participating First, in. First, I wanna introduce Rollins from Nordic. It's like the, the most simple explanation of open banking you can think of. Open banking is the ability to move banking data from one place to the other. People uh, that were banking with a bank, the information was trapped. And uh, if they wanted to move that information from one place to the other, there were very sophisticated ways to do that. Nothing that was easy and simple. And open banking has changed that. Open banking has asked all the banks to create ways that when people want to have control over their data and migrate the data from one place to the other, they would be able to do that. Today, we have 6,000 banks in Europe that all, all of these banks have a banking APIs, which means that the information can be transferred from, from one place to the other and that people are no longer in a complete lock-in with their existing bank. In Europe, a PSD2 or the Open Banking Regulation uh, spans across 31 countries. And in all those 31 countries, um, the, the implementation about lending and, and what credit, how it operates is very, very different. Um, uh, to the extent that every single European country has their own type of a credit bureau, credit information does not move from one place to the other. It's actually stuck the, the way that banking data used to be stuck. And so what we see is that uh, multinational lenders are using open banking data to do better credit assessment. And, uh, you know, paired together with digital lending and buying up later trends, um, I personally think that this is kind of a very, very exciting future to be participating in. I don't think it's fair that, you know, as a European, if you kind of move from one country to another, you have to rebuild your credit history completely from scratch. It is just a nightmare with <laughs> what's happening right now. Hearing Roland say that was crazy because I had just met with Jamie, the co-founder of Plend, earlier that day, who had shared a very similar story. A whole group of people, you know, about, about 12 million by uh, PwC and Experience uh, studies who were getting a pretty rough deal. Uh, in terms of the interest rates that they could access, in terms of the the credit that they could afford, um, because they were being judged by sort of outdated, uh, old-fashioned standards that the uh, traditional banks were, were were using. These sort of very limited data points that weren't really uh, sort of predictive about your kind of true affordability. And then I think I was really uh, angry, to be honest, when we started to look at the, the competition. We sort of really quickly realised that uh, the banks really insultingly call everyone who who isn't kind of worthy of the, the top level of, of lending uh, subprime, which to me is like the most offensive, you know, categorizations to, 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 to put people into. Um, but it, it really is a stark kind of contrast of haves and have nots, you know, the, the difference between people who have got a, a spotless credit credit score and can access loans of 7% or less, and basically people who, who can't, who it's not like the, the next one up is, loans at 15%, loans at 20%, it's loans at 40% at best, and that's at best. And I think that's what made me really angry. It was it was the sense that everyone who's not in that top level lending space is basically various shades of, of predatory. What Jamie said really resonated with me because when I first moved to Switzerland, getting a credit card was nearly impossible. So companies like Plend that use real data rather than arbitrary scoring systems are going to totally change our definition of affordability. Next, I spoke with Ivan from Monit to discover what other impact open banking will make on fintech. So open banking is enabling everyone to access the data they actually possess, but do this without Excel exports and, you know, compiling all the reports manually. Moreover, this actually creates healthy competition in a banking space for user experiences, because now that the banks do not own the data exclusively, they actually have to make sure that the experience they provide to users is good enough, because otherwise platforms like us and other players will actually take over day-to-day -day banking activities Activities simply by using open banking technology. So if you're someone building on open banking, we're so excited about what you're doing and we hope you'll get in touch with us so that together we can occupy the future.